Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Shadow Work Library. On today's episode, I'm interviewing Richard Rudd, who I would say is easily best described as a mystic, but best known for his work with the Gene Keys, the author and founder of the Gene Keys, which if you've been following the show, you know that the Gene Keys book is the foundation and constant inspiration for all of the solo shows that I do here. So I reached out to Richard a few weeks ago about being in our documentary, and um, it's on post-traumatic growth, which I will leave a link for the website and the teaser in the show notes if you wanted to check that out. And at the end of our conversation, he slips in there that he listened to this podcast, which is so funny because I just mentioned that because secretly I always worried that I would get a cease and desist in the mail one day. <laughs> And uh, now I have the man himself here to share with you all of uh, his origin story, to go through some of the magic of shadow work and the gene keys in his own words. But mostly we're going to be exploring a very important topic, which is true prosperity, what it really is, how we can spiritually and practically attune to it in a way that flows with life. And you're going to be learning a little bit about the pearl sequence deep dive, which will be a huge game changer for anyone that's called to do this kind of work at such a formidable time in our lives. So with that, Richard Rudd, welcome to the show. Thanks, Jessica. It's lovely to be here. I think you, your podcast is great. Um, and um, I'm, I'm delighted to be here. So, Oh, thank you. Thank I'm you at your so service. much. <laughs> awesome. Well, we're excited to have you too, of course. So I think that the best place to start here would be some of your early life experiences that helped you become the man you are today. I'm always curious about that. What would you say are some of those formidable moments that helped you channel the gene keys and the art of contemplation? Um, I, I suppose like one of the things that really stands out is I, I've in my life been a great traveler. And so I spent... Um, most of my 20s traveling around the world and when you travel especially travel I traveled on my own um, most of the time but when I say that you fall in with people um, when you're on your own and uh, and I guess I started when I was about 18 and just started just traveling and just moving from place to place um, and going as as sort of far and into the wilds as much as I kind of could. So if I was in a place like, for instance, Bolivia, um, I would find a bus or a, or a, or a truck some, or something like that that was going to somewhere in the middle of nowhere that where there might not be another way out for another week or so. And I would get on that truck. And um, because I wanted to go out into the, you know, into places where there weren't, travelers there weren't tourists there weren't westerners even and so I did a lot of that kind of experiencing and I really met humans but I met my own humanity I, I, I kind of met my own heart doing that and I met I, I found a, a place of trust in me um, trust in in the deep in the deep under kind of undersoul of life of this, of the, the, there was something, I realized that there was something taking care of me. You know, it was too, it happened too many times uh, for me to kind of not realize that. And so, yeah, I guess there are lots of journeys that I took all around the world in different places and had a lot of experiences and adventures. Um, but I say that that was one of the foundational things. So I recommend it to everyone, especially younger people, if you can. Um, get off and go traveling on your own, even in your own country, even in your own landscape. There's there's always like amazing things to discover, but you have to slightly push yourself past the kind of, I guess what you would in it was sort of the backpackers route or the you know the travelers route. You have to kind of push through that into like um, wilder realms where things are less certain. There may not be anywhere to stay. But you can guarantee that there's going to be someone that's going to look after you. Because um, I realized, you know, that humans are really kind, friendly beings. Um, and that was that was my that's my takeaway from, you know, 20 years or, or however many years I traveled back then. I, and of course, I guess then I started having um, I had, you know, a family, um, which was another um, another kind of piece of my life that helped me to anchor 
the gene keys because often I talk a lot about well I had this these great big kind of spiritual experiences um Jessica and I talk about those and and I've talked about them a lot uh on different podcasts and people wanting to know and they like that mystical stuff um and it is amazing but actually it was the other things that helped me bring it down to earth and so it was like family life um staying with one relationship even through difficulties um that really really helped me anchor like spiritual a spiritual teaching into my body and into my being and actually in a way the gene keys grew up some somehow it's like grew up through the through the cracks in the pavement of my family ordinary material basic life you know so this other spiritual thing has has grown up you know in an in a very sort of ordinary life if you know what i mean um mm. but i guess yeah all that traveling really prepared me and and then all the staying still in one place and being committed also prepared me those two sides of our nature that we have the the one that wants to go off and discover new things and the one that wants to stay put and really kind of dig into one place one thing one you know they both they all have their challenges because it's part of being human but um i think i i've done them uh in a very committed way i'm really glad you brought up the the extraordinariness of your experience as well because you're right people do want to hear about the mystical 3 days and 3 nights of the channeling and getting this immense connection to the divine but a lot of it is staring at a blank page with your mouth open wondering okay what do i do with this information you know and and the ordinariness of life has you has people in general contemplating am i on the right track am i committing myself to the right thing there are so many different ways we can go in our journeys and that that commitment to something that's really pulling at your heartstrings is so important. So before we get into some of the more mystical things that happened to you, what was pulling at your heartstrings that encouraged you on this path to somewhere you didn't really know where you were going? Yeah, I think it was almost like, you know, we come to this planet and we come, you know, with a sort of, you know, there are memories in us that we've been here before and you know, it depends on how sensitive you are and those memories, you know, they often disappear, start to disappear after the age of around seven. Um, but we're more in them when we're younger. And in in my case, they kind of didn't fully disappear. So I always had this very strong sense of I've been here before and I just know, I, I you know, I know stuff. And um, and I didn't know what it was, but traveling really helped me because the because I I went to places that where memories were triggered. They weren't always specific memories, but um, they were visceral. They were physical. My body needed to go to certain places that I had been to before, you know. And and that you know. And I, yes, I'm talking about reincarnation or rebirth. It's like, but it was really clear to me because I really sought them out. Like one. One experience, I went to Guatemala and um, and I would choose places. You know, I wasn't like a kind of, I'm going to do 10 countries in a in a month. I was like, I'd take one place and I'd go really deep there. Anyway, I went to Guatemala um, and I spent a lot of time there. And um, one night I was um, in a kind of, I was in Tikal in the, in the north, in the, in the wild, the jungles. And I was, I'd, I was just chat. I was in a, sitting in a bar, and I was chatting to a, a local guy. And my Spanish was okay, and um, and he turned out to be the night watchman for the pyramids. You know, these are the pyramids that were there, and I was, I'd gone to see the pyramids anyway. So I said, "Oh, I'd love to be in there at night." And he said, "I'll take you there." Oh, and I said, "Fantastic!" You know, cause, so he led me into the pyramids at night when it was all closed up. And we went up to the top of pyramid number four, which was the big one. And we climbed up and I'd been up there in the day and it was amazing. But at night, it was just like <laughs> incredible. The sound of the jungle all around you was just something. And it was a clear night um, and the moon and everything. And he and he and so I said to him, look, um, I want to stay up here the whole night. You know, you, you, you just leave me here. I'll be fine. And he was like, great. 
So he left me up there for the night and I spent this night on top of this pyramid in the jungle. And I tell you, I had so much, I couldn't sleep a wink. You know, the, the memory of this place, of this, of, of this structure, of this civilization, of being here before was so strong in me. Um, and I had a lot of experiences like that where doors opened, you know, little secret portals opened for me. And, and I realized, you know, that I was picking up threads of, of past lives and previous existences and different wisdoms that I'd been on. And, and, and I think, you know, for many of us, you know, we, we have those in us. Um, we're not always alert that when we're moving through life that they're actually really vibrating and they're talking to us. Even in quite mundane places, you meet someone in a bar, you know, and by chance, and they just you're just chatting to a stranger, and there's a connection, and you don't realise that there's something in that in that little connection. Even if you never see them again, there is some little exchange that's been revisited from an earlier something somewhere else, probably. So, um, and I'm not, I don't, you don't have to read meaning into everything, but it's. Um, it, it's very much alive in humans when we start opening up to those realms. So for me, that's why I went. I think that was the deeper unconscious reason that I went traveling into so many different far distant places because I kind of needed to pick up some of those threads and, and, and I wove them somehow into my into my being. Yeah. And into my teachings eventually. Great. Thank you for sharing that. How did you know that your your seeking and those adventures needed to be put on pause for a bit to commit to this transmission? Um, well, because I had this, you know, I, had, I received this three day transmission in, in the late 90s. Um, and it was so powerful in my life, in my inner being, that it just kind of uprooted me, basically. And, and it sort of brought an end to my travels in, in that phase, that chapter. And, um, and even though I did go off on forays and stuff, that, that hunger in me had changed because I now, had, uh, I now had a hunger for something else. Like I had a hunger to get back into that wide state of consciousness that I'd been in where... Um, I was just kind of flooded with the wisdom and the light of the of the whole universe, and um, and I, and because that that was like a door that had opened fully for me, but then closed or almost closed. Um, I really was desperate to kind of reopen that door and and revisit that state, that that transcendent state. Um, so that changed my trajectory a bit, um, and it was then I started more looking into teachings more deeply and uh, which I picked up in my travels lots of things um, and I was very interested in those but now it became more kind of um, I really need to understand for me deep inside and it kind of coincided with meeting my wife um, and then kind of staying put um, because we had a child and that changed also a new phase of my life and um but I was sort of I was integrating, so I, so I stayed in in the UK, you know, moving around and doing different things. But I was integrating, and it was a difficult period as well. You know, I I I was I had kind of um, a lot of energy going through my body, and I didn't understand. I had a, you know, I had wisdoms and things that had kind of come into me and been triggered. Um, and visions that had been triggered um, and they might have been visions of the future but I didn't really know they looked like they were you know they're almost like memories of this is what your life's going to be about but I didn't know and I and I and it, it wasn't an easy thing to talk about with most people um, and I and so I guess that was in my again my late 20s and then so a lot of my friends who I'd been through schools and things with had, were getting solid getting solid in their lives you know, they were having families and they were kind of getting jobs and they were finding their career paths and all those kind of things. And I was still a bit adrift, even though I'd, I had met my wife, but I was still a bit adrift. I didn't know what I was supposed to do. Um, and, I, and I was going to go into the wine business because that's my family business. That was, you know, in my early, you know, mid 20s, that was where I was going. But then because I'd had these big experiences, um, it sort of changed that 
idea, that notion, even though I love still um, wine as it happens and and, and a bit of a connoisseur, um, it's sort of, um, yeah, it changed my, changed my life direction. And so, yeah, I, I kind of, yeah, one, once I stay put, uh, that's when, you know, the next level of teachings kind of opened up for me and I started to write. I think that's when I started to write the Gene Keys book. Um, and I started to put pen to paper and kind of begin to really, um, bring it down in but it's it's something about also needing the feminine around you know i needed the anchor of of this woman my wife and i needed the anchor of this home and you know and sort of just babies and just <laughs> real family life and it really anchored and grounded me and then i that was really when i started to write and this book came out and it took you know obviously a long year many years took me you know a couple of years to write it the first run and then I kind of rewrote it and um another couple of years and then in in all it almost took seven years I think to kind of get that book from the first you know moment to the to it's being published so yeah that was a bit of a journey what a beautiful story love can do some crazy things to you uh meeting my husband yeah. also was the moment where I had my whole world rocked. And that's when my life really began a new chapter. I think that relationships don't often get the credit that they deserve because they can be challenging. But when you reflect in some of that hindsight, divine love is so miraculous. And I think that this conversation is all really incredibly relevant to our topic on prosperity because there are a lot of people listening that likely have family businesses or at least a narrative that their family has encouraged them to subscribe to what your path should be as your career or your vocation. And so that's a lot of what we're going to be talking about today is how can you find your own way through the world? Now, before we get into that, I did want you to touch a little bit on the Gene Keys and what it actually is. People listening do have a good idea of it, but if this is somebody's first episode, I would love for you to get into this in your own words. Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, in a sense, it's, it's hard to, it's, it's always hard to explain because it's, it, you know, it's a revelation that came, you know, and there, there's, there's, there's knowledge, you know, there's scientific knowledge, we know about that, that's something logic, and you know, and then there's intuitions that we have, and there's fantasies and things. And then one of the ways of knowing things is called revelation. And revelation is when um, it doesn't happen that often. But, a, but, a, you know, I, I suppose a, a sort of mini revelation, a strong intuition is like a mini revelation. But when I use the word revelation, I mean, a big kind of uh, memory of something that comes through you, um, an epiphany or something. And so the Gene Keys are a revelation because they kind of came, you know, they came as a whole sort of truth um, that is interconnected, you know, with lots of other truths. So they're a revelation of of the sort of source of all teachings, of all, you know, they're, they're the source behind all things. They're the, they're the code, the pattern that exists behind everything. And if we look into nature, if we look through science or we look through music or we look through lots of different lenses, we see there are patterns embedded everywhere in nature and in, and in the world and in our lives. And the same patterns often are found, in, you know, in different areas. And so the gene keys are based on the 64 fold pattern of you know, these, these, di these divine ratios that you find in the number 64, the eight octaves of music you find it in in. Um, you find it in plant life. You find it in the fractal geometry, the Fibonacci sequence, which you see in, in nature. You find it in the DNA. That's why I call gene keys. Genetic code is made up of 64 codons. And even our smartphones are based on 64-bit technology. So it is everywhere, but it's invisible. You know, we don't see it unless you're plugged into it you don't realize there's a code and that consists of multiple algorithms that's running throughout the cosmos you know and we, we we've sort of recreated our own version of that through the internet you know but actually the whole universe is an internet so all we've done is copied something that already exists everything is interconnected through these codes and these patterns and this is again what i learned on my journeys you know on my travelings like 
I learned that everything was just set on beautiful pathways with perfect timings. I meet this person at that time. They open up that experience. I meet that person. If I'd been like two minutes later, I wouldn't have met them. That experience wouldn't have happened. And so synchronicity, so everything being harmonically connected in this stream. And so the Gene Keys are an exploration of those codes. And but what, it, what the book does, the main Gene Keys book, is it brings them down into human sort of psychology and ideology so that we can kind of understand our code. So, so, the, so the main Gene Keys book that, you know, as you know, it's quite a big book. It's like a chunky, great thing. Mm-hmm. Um, it goes into all 64 of these codes. Um, and, you know, an example for a newcomer, if you haven't, you know, if you've never done it, I'll open it at random and I'll just pick one. Um, 44. Um, so that's a code that's about human karmic relationships. Um, and they have three layers. So this one would have, you know, in, in here, you can probably see, it's like it's got these three layers. It's got the shadow, the gift, and, the, and what I call the city. City is a Sanskrit word meaning divine essence. Um, and so the shadow here is interference. The gift is teamwork. And the city is called synarchy. So those three words are unpacked in that chapter and what they really mean. Um, so interference, for example, is, you know, the, the shadows, there are 64 shadows. These, they're, they are kind of victim states of humanity. They're the places where we get stuck and we stay in suffering. So interference exists at all levels in the patterns. You know, so when we leave the patterns of life to just run and we're in flow and harmony with them, then they move very smoothly. But when we try and interfere with them, and we do that in lots of different ways, it might be that we do it through stress. And later we can look at like, if you're trying to, if you would like to make lots of money, um, it might be said that if you're trying too hard to push your business in a certain direction, you're actually interfering with the harmonic flow of where your business would like to go. And that's different from where you want it to go. So, and that's the same with relationships. It's the same with people. You know, we are trying to interfere with other people and we, you know, we have patterns that kind of want them to change. We want them to be different. You know, that's a form of interference. So what you see is these are, these words are actually, they're ripples. They, they ripple out into the whole fabric of the universe. But then you see in that particular example, it's teamwork. The gift is teamwork. So that particular, what it teaches you, if you have that imprinted as a part of your nature, as a part of your journey, then um, that teamwork is what you're all about. So you're here to learn, to kind of learn the art of non-interference. Um, and that's that's really what teamwork is: working with a team, working with a group, and working in a network, connecting with people, listening to people, empathizing with people, um, maybe giving a little bit of push here and there, just a steer, um, but not interfering with the natural process that of of dynamic communication between human beings, or even you, it could be animals. You could apply it to nature. You could be a gardener with that gene key. And you could apply it anyway. You could apply it to your music. If you're a musician, you could apply it to business. If you're a business person, if you're a mother, you might apply it to how you bring up your children. So that's what the Gene Keys are. They provide us with these layers for us to work with our lives. Um, and on top of that, we have these, um, you know, these these pathways called sequences. Um, that are the specific algorithms for each person. So that the Gene Keys book describes all the patterns, all 64 of them. But then each of us has specific sequences imprinted from our birth, from a time of birth. Um, and so when you, so we have a profiling system on genekeys.com. If you're new, you can look at that and go genekeys.com, put in your free, your profile, and then put in your information, your birth information, and you will see your sequences mapped out. You'll see sequences of gene keys that relate to different aspects of your life. You know, the first one is called the activation sequence. It's about living a life of purpose. You know, what's your higher purpose? That Those keys show you how to come to a place where you're living your higher purpose, a series of realizations, you know. Um, the second one is about love. Those key, the algorithms of love 
for you are kind of displayed in that. It's called the Venus sequence. And it shows, as you know, Jessica, you've done this one. Um, it shows you the layers of trauma that are imprinted in your child through your childhood and even in when you were in the womb and how that trauma actually can be opened up and how it actually contains gifts. It contains our genius. It contains our ability to truly connect with another human being, but we have to move through the healing of those layers of trauma. Every human being carries trauma, every human being. In whatever state, no matter how perfect a childhood you have, there's always trauma imprinted because you're coming into the world. Birth itself is a form of trauma. And your mother's impulses, even while you're in the womb, you know, it are imprinting those tiny um, organs as they're growing and developing. So there are layers of this um, trauma inside us and they, it causes the difficulties that we experience in love. And so the Gene Keys, the Venus sequence shows you your algorithms of moving through opening your heart, you know, and that's a very precious process. And working with the Gene Keys takes time. It takes support. It takes working with others. Um, but you can, you can, it, it is a self-led journey, you know, so it is very profound like that. It's applicable to anyone and everyone in the world. And the third one I just mentioned, because we're going to talk about it in a minute anyway, I think is that is called the pearl and it's about prosperity. So these are, this is your algorithm. Everyone has an algorithm for prosperity to prosper in life. That doesn't just mean make money as it means to prosper in health, to prosper in money, to prosper in relationships, to prosper everywhere at all levels. So um, all of that is encompassed in working with your Gene Keys profile. We call it your hologenetic profile. So that's a little intro. That is a great definition of something that seems indefinable anytime somebody asks me what it is. So I'm going to save that and just send them the recording next time anyone asks. <laughs> One of my favorite things that you'd mentioned there <laughs> is understanding the patterns and how they're so interrelated into everything that we do. I, I find that the experiential or like the learning curve of experiencing the Gene Keys system for the first time is often this sense of, oh my gosh, there is so much to know about the world because there's so much in every sentence within that book. And then you get to a point where you realize that these patterns are in what you're doing day to day. So if you're into technology or you're in music or you're in permaculture, once you become a master of those things, it's like you're living that transmission in your own way, just in a certain type of, of realm. It's interesting that you had chosen the 44th on teamwork and, and synarchy because I think that leads us really well into prosperity, especially around how we don't have to do it alone. Um, this conversation of, around prosperity is so important right now. We're getting into a time astrologically where we're going to be asked to tune into the gifts of Taurus. I'm talking about the shift from the North Node of Gemini into uh, into Taurus in 2022. And as you probably know, that means that we're going to be cosmically shoved <laughs> into redefining what we believe around money and financial systems and values, among other things, but also integrity and getting back to what's essential. And in our modern, at least Western beliefs around money, getting back to the essentials and integrity, unfortunately, don't quite fit into the common narrative. So this is a perfect time to talk about prosperity and how we can get back in touch with the highest expressions of it. So let's dive into that. How would you define true prosperity as opposed to this focus on wealth and hyper productivity that we might think of? Yeah, it's a great question, Jessica. And I, I often, I, I love to explore this one. I, I do um, set wealth and prosperity as different, very different goals in life. Um, so wealth, I see as, um, I don't see it as bad, by the way, I just see it as a, a more limited version of prosperity and actually a failed version of prosperity. Um, wealth as accumulation, you know, it's, it's, it's a constant accumulation of more and, 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 and what it does, what wealth will do in that sense is even though it will give you comforts, um, it, it won't deliver you fulfillment it will only deliver you actually more complexity because the more you build it, the more complex whatever it is you're building becomes. 
and it takes more and more of your time. And it takes more and more, you know, and even if you employ other people to do all the work, which you will, because you're going to have to, you have, you're, you're the spider at the beginning, this, in the center of this huge web that just goes on growing and it won't leave you alone, you know? And so, um, in a way, the, 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 the mechanics of, of growing wealth are kind of, are based on simple strategies. Anyone, if they follow those strategies, can do it. Um, it's not, you know, anyone can become wealthy, actually. You know, if you've got some, if you've got a good idea, some courage, some, you're willing to take some risks, you don't mind failing a few times, you know, eventually you'll, you can do it. Um, prosperity is very different because prosperity doesn't start with the, with the, I want more. It starts with how can I be of service? Um, which is a completely different, sets you off in a completely different direction. How can I be of service is actually a really powerful question to ask because you then, you, you, your growth, when it begins out of that question, it, it then feeds back into the whole. So, so you're not just accumulating, you're creating flow. And that's the, that's the secret of prosperity. It's about flow. It's not just about money. See, you can gain, you could accumulate great wealth and yet other areas of your life will pay the price. You know, maybe your family, maybe your kids, you know, maybe you, you know, maybe you never spend any time with your shoes and socks off in nature. Maybe, you you know, because you're just constantly, you know, answering emails or doing whatever it is you, you do to maintain this, this kind of growing organism. Um, so, you know, uh, prosperity is about flow. So as soon as it comes in, it needs to be given back out. And that's what nature does. Nature doesn't accumulate, doesn't over accumulate. You know, it shares and distributes always, you know, because it's there's always creatures. Whenever there's, you know, when the apple tree in my garden down here that produces, you know, you know, thousands of apples. It's an old tree, you know, thousands of apples each year. Like we can only eat a few of them. The birds can only eat a few of them squirrels and other things you know it's like there's so many like that you would think they're wasted they just fall and we let them but then they feed and nurture the tree itself and the ground and the earth and all kinds of creatures under the ground they you know that that compost feeds and the microorganisms and the soil itself so that's prosperity prosperity is when it's redistributed in a in a kind of balanced way and so the first question is, how can I be of service, is actually the question of prosperity. But because prosperity also, you know, it allows growth, but it maintains simplicity, you know, so you can grow, but because you're feeding and nourishing and sharing and distributing and redistributing, um, your life doesn't become overly complicated and it doesn't become overly heavy. It, uh, you, can, you still have time because you, have, you, you, you don't become a slave to it. And so it, it's hard to explain, but when you, when you open up that doorway of prosperity and you take that path through that question, it opens up all the synchronicities in life. It's like me doing the travels again. You know, I, meet, I take a distant bus to this place and then I meet a person who gives me the clue to the next part of my journey. Um, instead of like just following this set kind of strategy that's like, okay, I'm going to go on this route to this route. And then I look in the book and it says, yeah, do this, go to that restaurant. That's really good. It's cheap, whatever and you go. And you kind of follow the same route as loads of other people have gone, which is fine. <laughs> you know, it's fine. And yet true prosperity is wild. You know, it's, it comes from our genius and it comes and the and the depth of our genius has to be given out to others it needs to be shared it needs to be shared so that deep question of how can i be of the greatest service to the whole is the question that's at the core of what it means to prosper and if you truly are prospering you're you're healthy you're balanced you don't build up anxiety you're not constantly thinking about the worrying about the thing that's growing because it's it's never overgrowing. It's always feeding itself. It's feeding multiple people. In fact, what's left is gratitude. It's huge amounts of gratitude for for what you're for what you're doing, but also from hundreds of people, thousands of people who are who are benefiting from your prospering model. Not to mention, um, you can also maintain 
and, and keep your relationships flourishing and maintain a balance in all aspects of your life. So that's what I mean by prosperity. It's, it's a life lived in balance. And I guess anyone listening to this, like one of the questions you have to ask yourself is, you know, um, do I want to kind of, which one do I want? You know, do I want that, you know, massive, that kind of wealth where it's just top heavy? And, and the other thing about that is that if, you do, if you're not fueling it back into the system, if you're not finding a way to, to nurture others through that, and you're, you're, what you're doing is you're consuming resources. You know, and so things that grow too big, they just go on consuming and consuming more and more resources, and eventually they have to decline. They actually have to decline. And even though it looks like they'll never decline, like the Romans never thought the Roman emperor, Empire would decline. They never thought it. They never. They thought this was it forever. You know, how can something so big, so complicated, so, you know, widespread, how could that ever diminish? And yet, you know, a few hundred years, 400 years later, it's gone, you know, and we're back to like another kind of lifestyle. Mm. And it's the same with, with our you know, our little mini empires that we create. So we have to kind of ask that heart-based question. That's the beginning. So I'll start there anyway. That's a very brave place to start because we have a distorted perception of what we need to survive. We're living in a distorted survival state. And I think that touches back on what we were talking about earlier about getting back to the essentials. You've been listening to lots of podcasts um, in, in self-discovery and spirituality, one of the most common stories that I hear is the person that did the thing. They had the big career, they had it all, they had massive wealth, and then realized that it's not what made them happy, and then they simplified. That's a journey, and then you also, when you go that path, you have the opportunity to also experience what it's like to have what culture has nurtured us into believing is is like true happiness and having all this wealth and all the things. I think the braver journey though is to not have to get there. And and that's challenging in itself because so many people just want to know what that feels like. You know, um, I want to know what it feels like to have the giant house and the nice car and to have money not be an issue ever again. So it takes a lot of courage to go there. And I think just like so many of the other express expressions of our shadows, there seems to be two opposite manifestations of this unhealthy relationship with, with money and the idea of wealth, that one belief that money is the root of all evil and that it's unspiritual, you know, that can take you all kinds of places. And then there's the other side, that overwhelming focus on making money and learning how to make money and, and feeling that, res that fear when our reserves start to go down. And for so many people, they have both of those things happening at the same time, which can make everything feel quite confusing. So I would love if you could elaborate a little bit more on on this idea of lack. Um, how does how does the feeling of not feeling resourced play into this this journey to discover this healthy relationship with prosperity? Well, it's a great question, and and you know I started when I before I because I wrote a I've written a book for each of these sequences, you know, and if you go onto my website and if you're exploring these um journeys because they're laid out as you know as, as self-study courses really beautiful courses that you can go in and you and you can unlock the layers of your algorithms and it takes time like in the venus sequence it takes time to unlock and the, some of the layers of your wounding and your trauma but then you begin to realize how that works and the same with with fight with money and prosperity so when i started out really contemplating that one I wanted to get right to the core of well, what is it? What is prosperity? I just asked myself that question. What is that prosperity? You know, what is it? And some some surprising answers came because I'm a contemplator, as you know. So I contemplate things I, before, you know, and it has to come up in me, and and then I and the, the truth wells up, and if you give it enough time, it wells up, and then it and then it comes, and then you feel it come in your being. Um, and so for me, one of the answers to that question was um, the ability to make fire, right? I was like, wow, that's a really, in I was not expecting that answer. You know, prosperity is the ability to make fire. And, I, and that went deep in me. And I thought, well, you know, when humans first made fire, that must have really 
been quite something, you know, and 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 passing on that gift from generation to generation is really must have been quite something, you know. And maybe if you you know at some point, I guess there were tribes that didn't have that gift, but then had to learn it. And so the sharing of that gift is also quite something, um, because it allowed others to also prosper. Because the moment you have fire, you have so much power. You have so many things you can do. Um, and and funnily enough, I I um, I have rung up a friend of mine who is an expert in bushcraft, and I said, "Will you come and teach me how to make fire?" <laughs> and so he came round to my house, and we spent the 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 day um, where he showed me how you make a fire from nothing, just with your hands, you know. And it took us the whole day of like scouting around, looking for certain tools, implements, then kind of sharpening and building your gear and then the actual process of actually doing it and finding the right materials and what it's like when it's wet and all those kind of things. But at the end of the day, I'd made fire, you know, on my own with my own tools in my own way. And I felt so different. And and I I'm not saying this as a, as a, you know, it's a metaphor, but it's also true. Like the, the me now I know how to make fire is a very different me from the one before. Uh, because now I feel like wherever I go, whatever happens in the universe, in this world, I know I have the skills to make a fire. Um, as long as, you know, I'm not in a desert or something, you know, there's got to be some, some basic tools around. Um, but it, that metaphor was not lost on me at all. And it grew in me as like, wow, just actually very simple things, you know, knowing in how to kind of access your own in a fire you know trusting in yourself is like real that's the foundation of prosperity loving yourself in some way or you know appreciating the life that you have you know around you now being alive you know and i coined this term spiro ergo prospero i breathe therefore i prosper just the fact that we are alive means we are we are prospering so that's the baseline. We are already prospering. That's where you have to begin. You have to not, you have to realize you are not lacking. Right now, you are just, you are just filled with potential. There's no lack around about you at all. So if you begin from there, then it grows spontaneously in a very different way because you've already lit the fire, you know, because you realize that you you are already prospering, right? And and you sometimes you might have to look around you and go, well doesn't feel like it but then actually you look around and you go well i i actually i have a i have a child or i have a, a, a husband or i have a wife or I, and i have that that apple tree out there and i have you know the, my dog or whatever it is and you suddenly realize actually i i you know and i i i have a, an i live in a nice place and you know whatever it is you know i live in a i live in a nice country that's safe or you know wherever you are you find the things around you to be grateful for and that's how you begin the journey you don't even begin from lack you don't even allow that concept because we're not and that's what the pearl teaches this this transmission of um the algorithm of prosperity like if you just look at the pearl it's it's three um triangles and with one three uh, it's a triangle with three spheres around the outside and one in the middle let's so find a picture of it um it's a small picture there like that mm. right so it's you know that shape is symbolic of the prospering energy at the core of creation you know and in the pearl sequence there's a sequence of three pathways and and then you know, where you close that loop. The first one's called initiative, initiative. I'll talk about that in a sec. Then growth up to the top. And then the third one is called service. So initiative, growth, service. And with the service one, you close the loop. And when you close the loop, that one in the middle comes alight and you get three pathways that come from each of the spheres. They're called the quantum pathways. Um, and that's where you generate this inner heat because you've closed the loop in the pearl you know so you've closed the loop inside yourself there is no lack and and that means that you generate like a like a uh, an eternal engine like you create the free energy that's at the core of creation it's an amazing metaphor but it's also true it's also you can you can apply this simple set of laws to anything in life 
and it will start to prosper. I'm not kidding. You just apply these laws through using your art of contemplation. You apply these simple laws to anything in life and it's like touching it. It's like Midas touch. It becomes gold. It starts to prosper. You can apply it to your family. You can apply it to your relationships. You can apply it to your business. You can apply it to, you know, you learning the piano. You can apply it to any problem that you have in your life and it will start to prosper in some way. It, now, prosperity doesn't always mean it's going to be perfect. It might, part of the prosperity might be that it splits up and reforms in a different way. Um, but what it does is it generates harmony, a harmonic, because you're coming from a place of um, there is no lack, you know, in this universe. You're coming from a place of trust. This is this is the key to prospering from doing the things that you love, because that's the big question that I, that are on so many of our minds. We all want to do what we love, and in many cases, what we do instead is in the name of wealth and not that. So uh, I do want to get into the four spheres that make up this sequence and the pathways that I didn't want to uh, skate over that very good practical wisdom that you shared there about building fire. Um, I'm from Los Angeles and I lived a very Los Angeles life growing up. So I didn't know how to build a fire or how to find food or, you know, water or anything like that. And if the systems went down, I would have been very not very resourced. It's just the family that I grew up in. They taught me a lot of other things, but not that. Since moving to Canada and meeting Jeff, he he's a bushman. He knows how to build fire out of, you can't even believe what he can build fire out of. It's amazing. He can find water in the most desolate places. He knows how to find food. He knows what to eat and what not to eat. And just having those basics of what it really means to be human on a very physical level is so empowering. And once I learned that, I realized how resourced I really am. So I just wanted to encourage anyone who may be feeling a lack of resources to go back to those essentials and just explore a little bit, learn a little bit about them, and it can feel really good for the soul. So I do want to get into now the life's work, vocation, culture, and the pearl. I don't know how the best way to do that would be. Do you think it would be to give a couple examples or an example of each, like with a Gene Keen line? How, how would you like to go about doing that? Yeah, sure. I mean, um, we can do yours if you like. Ooh, you know yes, yours. I do. Can you share your screen? Is that? Uh, or do you want to just no, do No, I can't no, do that okay. on this, so but I can pick, tell you. So, so, yeah, well, you can just tell me and then we'll, we can take it from that, use examples. Yeah, living examples. The pearl, the pearl begins with um, vocation. And so vocation. there's a word, the sphere of vocation. Do you know what yours is? 40.4. .4. Okay, so when we, so and anyone else who wants to, who's following along, listening to this, you can go to the profile and we're looking at the sphere that's called vocation. That's right. And and so there are, di there are different spheres in this and they sound, some of them sound a bit similar. So you might think, well, what's life's work? And then there's purpose and then there's vocation. They're all similar sounding, but they mean different things. Um, so vocation is, is what kind of, is what life draws out of us. So, um, you know, it's the gift or the genius that life is wanting to draw out of us. So, um, and also because you have a gene key here, you also, you can see, well, what's in the way of that? Also, what's the shadow in the way? Um, and, and remember this gives birth to the, to a pathway called initiative. So out of that vocational power comes a natural sense of initiative. So the thing that can get in the way for you, Jessica, one of the things anyway, might be exhaustion because mm -hmm. <laughs> the 40th gene key is about just feeling overwhelmed and um, whether that's emotionally, whether that's, you know, physically, it can be, or it can be all levels mentally, like just an overwhelm that kind of just takes, saps your energy so that you don't feel you don't have any initiative. I don't know if that kind of resonates with you, but. Absolutely. So that would be like um, a shadow to, to, to recognize, but then to, to kind of <clears throat> transform. You know, because we only really lose our energy when we're kind of doing the wrong things in life or we're trying to force things to go a certain way rather than allowing them. So vocation is something that, you you know, again, it comes back to you. We have to ask this simple question. 
what, how can I be of the highest service to the whole? <clears throat> and if you go on asking that question really deeply every day, life will start to kind of talk to you. <laughs> you know, opportunities might even open up for you because you have the courage to ask the question and say, well, I, you know, I'm, I, even if you're doing something you don't want to be doing right now, you can still ask that question inside. And things will come to you. You know, they are, you know, to contemplate something over a period of time is a very profound thing to do because insights come to you. Um, you know, and you and and you don't have to then rush off and change your life right away. Although you might make some adjustments, you know, as as insights drop in, and it might be that something else comes your way in time. It, it will be eventually. Um, and that line of initiative is is you know out of there comes this you know for you the gift of the 40 is resolve and to you know resolve is the real power to like right i now know exactly what i need to do i don't know the details i don't know how it's going to happen but you've dig down inside and then you realize there's something buried inside you you came here with it on this earth it's been deeply buried under all kinds of stuff you know, all kinds of ideas, all kinds of experiences, all kinds of failed things. That's not, I'm not just talking about you, Jessica, I'm talking about everyone, you know. And so we have to kind of move all that clutter out of the way and get to the pearl that's inside us and go, well, this is the, you know, I, this is the thing I want to do. I want, this is the thing I want to do to help the world, you know, and to help myself. And then, out, and then that resolve is what fires the initiative into your life. You know, and and then the next part, you know, and it's a fourth line. The, we have lines as well, like there's, which give a little bit more color. There's six possible lines. So all the fourth lines are about um, really deeply connecting with people. Um, so we know that for you, your, you know, your resolve of this is what I want to do to help the world is going to be you have to directly connect with multiple people, lots of people and commit and get to know them and make lots of friends and contacts. And that's one of the ways in how it's going to grow for you. You know, so you put that initiative out through everyone, you know, for the people you trust, the people you love. And that's also very enjoyable. So that gives you energy, right? You don't give the energy to the people that you don't resonate with, because that would sap your energy, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's simple. You're just choosing the pathways. It's like a gardener. You put the seed where the soil is good you don't put it where the soil was is not good you know you you find the right soil and and that's the same and then out of that comes initiative and out of that initiative you reach the next sphere which is called culture and the sphere of culture is all about the gene key that you have there is all about how does life respond to your initiative where does it place you where do you best belong and fit in a wider organization organism not not it doesn't have an organization but organism humanity is an organism <clears throat> nature is an organism so tell me your culture sphere and i love my culture sphere <laughs> it's a three <laughs> line four so it's another line four mm -hmm. so your culture sphere, you know just from that like your culture sphere is going to place you again in with people with, you know, in with networks, you know, with networking with, you know, so <clears throat> the way it's going to work for you is growth is going to come always through people, through the people, you know, through the people you meet, through the people you connect with heart to heart, the people you really get along with, you know, and again, it, you wouldn't give energy to people that you don't resonate with. You'd only give it to the people you do resonate with which makes your life really simple. You know? mm -hmm. um, so in business, we don't always do that, right? So if you if this is a business, it means you don't go into business with someone you don't resonate with. You know, you just can't because you know that the moment you do that, you actually bring in the possibility of entropy and entropy is when energy leaks through the, you know, it leaks out and it causes more problems. So this is a real clarity. This is a way of like, you just do business with people that you, who share your values. And that means you have to not compromise. And it also means they have to kind of see your young bubbling idea energy of the third gene key, which is innovation, innovative, innovative energies. 
um, and you have to really kind of, you know, you're going to, you're going to, so again, it's like you've got something that's innovative and new and like the world doesn't really understand it yet. There's only going to be specific people that respond to that. And, and, and so those are the, those are the places you follow it. And that's how it grows. That's how that innovation and even at the, the city is called innocence. It's even that kind of playfulness that you bring into, you know, bringing back something that brings back people's spirits, something that brings back the, that sense of um, abundance and play that the child has. You know, that's what that third gene key is all about. Um, so your culture is going to place you in a, you know, in, you know, in a big tribe in some way, you know, in a tribe of, you know, when you find your tribe, your, we call it your fractal sometimes, your connection of your allies who you've had probably for lifetimes, but they start to spin around you. And then you start to move as a part within a greater whole. And this is the real secret of the Pearl teachings, that we don't prosper alone. It's not possible. You can make wealth on your own. You can be the kingpin or the you know top of your you know hierarchy, um, but you're on your own. You're alone. You did it alone. You may have had all these people supported you, but like you know you're a loner. Whereas in in the pearl, it's all about collaboration. And even if you may be the entrepreneur, so it was your idea to begin with, you needed all these people, you know, who came and connected with you and. The other realization that I've had from the pearl about business is, you know, that business is, is designed to be fun. <laughs> and most of the time it isn't, you know, most of the time it's just stressful. And, it, you know, part of that fun is taking the time to connect with people. It's about relationships. You know, in fact, you might say that the relationships are more important than the result, you know, whether you succeed or not. And, and if you create great relationships, then um, when you get to the end of your life, you'll have had a very fulfilling life. And this is why the Pearl kind of asks us these fundamental questions, like what is success? What does it really mean? Does it mean material success? You know, or does it mean something else? It, does it mean lots of great fulfilling friendships? I mean, you know, I leave it. You, each person has to weigh for themselves. Like, which is which one? When you get to the end of your life, will you wish you'd had more of, more money, or more fulfilling friendships? <laughs> you know, so that's a great way of you to look at like your own pearl, and then, you know, out of, that starts to grow. You know, you start to grow your 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 life starts to grow from that um, bloom, from that innocence, from that innovation that you have. And then it goes up to the top one, which is called brand. So what's your brand? A nine line six. Okay, so nine line six. And the brand is all about our voice and how, you know, how our inner being, our innermost dream impacts people out there. So it's how we transfer and transmit the core of our being clearly and cleanly to the world, to others, you know, so, and this isn't just in business. This is like the mother to her child, the father, to, you know, it's, it's anyone to anyone. How do you transmit your inner teaching, you know, that you've brought with you, your vocation and the brand helps us to kind of, um, you know, refine that voice. So, if you have a six line brand, it's all about like um, education, really. It's about vision and education. So it's like if you had, if you were, you know, like I often look at the brand as like I, I kind of use the metaphor of business. I go, look, it, you know, if you're talking to if you're a first line brand, then you would be talking to the part of humans that doesn't feel secure. You know, so a first line business might be the insurance business, you know. Because if you take out this insurance, then whatever happens to you will pay you lots of money, even if you die, your parent, you know, your friends will get it and stuff, you know, so that, you, that makes you feel like, okay, I feel safer with that. <laughs> it's like, all right, so it's just kind of, but it's, it's so it's this insur insurance is a first line. You know? And then the second line, I'm not going to do them all, but I'll give you an, a flavor. Second line is, is, is image based. So it's like how it looks. So a second line brand would be um, catch their attention. Whatever you do, so it's not, not make them feel safe. 
catch their attention. So you might do something really beautiful and aesthetic, and you go, and that's that's the way you catch people. You catch them through, you know, you're you're bringing them into your teaching or your message through something beautiful. So if you're a second line, you that's your your that is your natural nature, not necessarily to be beautiful, but to to kind of to to be very visual, you know, for others. So you're very visual, and then, and it goes on up. When time you get to the sixth line. Um, and and you'll have to do the pearl if you want to learn all the others and find out your own. Um, and you'll come on my retreat. I'll tell you about how you can do that at the end. But the sixth line um, is um, about education and vision, right? So um, it's about, you know, you want the sixth line brand wants to share its its message with someone, but it really wants to help that person so much that they never have to come back again. <laughs> you know, so it's like a psychotherapist that, doesn't want to kind of have people rely on them. A psychotherapist wants to give them some tools so that they can help themselves. So they put themselves out of business. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That's the sixth line, right? It's so selfless. It wants to put itself out of business, you know? And so it's always thinking the long-term view. So it's like, so whenever you're sharing about anything, you've always got to have that kind of idea of like, how can I help educate people so they don't need people like me? You know, that's really it. So if I can give them these tools, they don't ever need to listen to me again. Um, and and the more people I can reach like that, the better, because then eventually I people like me are not needed because it's like the fire. Like if I can teach everyone how to make fire, then I, you know, they can make fire on their own. You know, it's better than me having them come and do a workshop and then I'll show them how to make fire. And then here are the tools. They can buy the tools off me and then they become reliant, you know, lots of, mm-hmm. you know, so it's like give them the tools so that they can do it themselves. That's the six line. It's always the most selfless of the six lines. It's the one that sees the furthest and is, think- is, is you know, so it's a way of thinking and a way of expressing. And the ninth jinky is, is about sort of real one pointed determination and, like going about, you know, having it, you can have a huge vision um, and building it step by step over the course of your life, very carefully, each step, one step at a time, building towards that eventual kind of big vision um, that you have kind of at the core of your being. Does that make sense? Wow. That was great. That encompasses so much of my life experience, especially in the last several years where I started to do this work and learn more about myself so that I even had the capacity to know what I aligned with. And I actually didn't. So I haven't gone into the Pearl sequence in full depth, which is why I'm so excited about this upcoming virtual retreat. I spent an entire year on my life's work sphere. After that, I was like, okay, I'm going to have to hurry this up a little bit. I might not have enough lifetime to go through all of it. (laughs) But yeah, um, and then going through the the golden path up until this point, it's just really great timing to be able to connect with you now and to feel like energetically we're all coming into a place where we're being asked to look at prosperity from a different lens and – it's so exciting to get my gene yeah. keys uh, interpreted by you, or at least um, well, facilitated. It, it, and <laughs> well, the pearl's really beautiful because it shows you, it shows us as individuals. If this is the algorithm, algorithm of your prosperity, it shows you how to enact that algorithm in the world, and then it shows you how other people, how it generates the same algorithm in other people, so that we collaborate together, and. And so it's a really a collective teaching. It's, you know, it's not like a strategy because it has, it's got magic hidden in it. I don't know how else to say it. Like my, um, many of us know that experience of synchronicity. The pearl is all about synchronicity. So that when you're doing something selfless, you engender the power of synchronicity. You know, we've heard about the law of attraction and that sort of stuff. Um, so it, it does start to create ripples in the fabric of the, the space time. You know, this is why these um, these final pathways, when you put it back into service of the whole, they're called the quantum pathways and they lead to the pearl at the core. And the pearl at the core is like this beautiful little eternal rocket and an engine that never runs out of fuel. In fact, all it's the grail. That's what it is. It's the holy grail. It's the abundant cup of, you know, in, in my 
Pearl book, I, I described the story of Percival seeking the Holy Grail. And I, and I use that as a metaphor for our own, you know, inner journey of, 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 of like prospering in life. So in the Grail myth, Percival has to find out, you know, this question, what is the question of the Holy Grail? You know, so he finds the Grail, but then the, he has to answer the Grail question. It's like a riddle, right? And he's like, what the hell's the Grail question? Because if he can't answer the question, he can't unlock its power, its healing power. And it has the power to heal the world, to heal the wasteland, right? And so he has to go away and he goes on lots of adventures and journeys. And finally, he figures out the answer to the Grail question. And it is the question I put, it's like, how can I be of the greatest service to the whole? That is the grail question. If you ask that question, then you engender ripples of benevolence throughout your life, throughout the fabric of space-time. And then the pearl, what, what's your pearl, Jessica? Oh, uh, it is 51 line six. So 51 line six. Then the pearl, it, it, you know, you, you kind of harvest the grace of the pearl because the pearl itself is that, is actually, we call that sphere in the middle of that triangle, the pearl sphere. Um, and so it's actually, that is the kind of apex where, you know, where everything comes to us. And so in a way, what that gene key does is it describes our reward, it describes our harvest, it describes what comes to us when we live a selfless life, you know, of service and love and initiative and we grow it and we connect and we open. And so for you, that's 59. That's all, you know, which is a big gene key because it's like 51? Mm -hmm. 51, okay, 51, which is like a kind of um, the awakening gene key, right? Mm. So it's the, it's the one that kind of creates ripples of awakening everywhere. You know, that's its, that's its city, that's its highest aspect. Um, its gift is initiative to initiate multiple other people everywhere you go. Because the sixth line is, again, it's another sixth line. And the sixth line is all about everything in nature. It's about everything in the environment. You know, so it's about living sustainably. It's about creating the miraculous, in fact, because it's about unlocking the quantum energy within creation and, and, and the quantum energy within people, within individuals. So when you have five or six geniuses working together in one area or in one thing, you've no idea how much can get done because just one genius, imagine how much you can get done. But if you have a group who are living their vocation, who are growing their seeds, you know, their pearl, but they come together, there's nothing that that group can't achieve. And so that six line is looking at that at a much bigger level it's looking at the abundance of the universe and it's going well the whole universe works like this so actually all we have to do is get back to the kind of core question over and over again and get back to like the simple basics of life and that's why the keynote for the sixth line in the pearl is called nature and um, which is a bit of a mysterious keynote because the others are like um you know line one is simplicity so it means you're, you're given simplicity. And I always say to people, like, when you look at the pearl, you're looking at your relationship to money. You're looking at your reward. And ha so you're looking at how much money you might, that might come to you um, according to your, you know, if you're living at your highest potential. You know, so, so a line one, sorry to tell you, but I'm not sorry to tell you, that <laughs> it's simplicity. So you won't get much money because you don't need much money. And in fact, it would be awful if you got too much because you wouldn't know what to do with it. You just want to get rid of it and it would cause you a headache. So the line ones are all like, I just want to live in nature. I just want my dog. I just want this little house. I don't need anything more. Simplicity is it. It is where I am deeply fulfilled, you know, and, and I have my friends around me. I mean, you know, all of those things are also met as part of simplicity. And so each of the pearls has, it shows, it shows us a layer of reward right in different ways and the second line is about recognition so it's about the reward comes more from having soul companions deep deep soul companions that you've kind of spent your life around and then the third line is celebration those are people that 
you know, they're here to celebrate life. That's that they're here to remind us. You know, there are always people in every community who throw the best parties, right? Those are the third line people because they just they they it just bubbles over in them, you know. It just bubbles over and they can't help themselves. They want to share it around. So those kind of if you're a third line, you'll probably get a lot of resources coming your way. Synchronicity will deliver you probably some considerable material resources in order that you can share them around. And the fourth line is our fourth line is um, charity. You know, so those are people that their real they, what their love is is help is helping others. It's just helping others out of difficult situations, you know, and seeing the look on their face, you know, when they can help them. And so again, that's a person that might get quite a, quite amount quite a bit of resources, but it might not belong to them. But they're going to have access to lots of resources so that they can do this charitable whatever it is work. And then line five is um, it's kind of power, you know, it's responsibility, and the line fives are the leaders of the world. So, um, but it can be it doesn't mean like a big world leader. It might be just a small kind of local leader. And this is one of the things, or it might be a you know someone in in charge of an area or a business or a, you know one thing, um, but then is a role model for others um, and a guide for others or a mentor figure for others. And that's what's going to fulfill them. Um, so they may get given, you know, a fifth line might get given, um, might get put in charge of lots of money, you know, or might inherit or might kind of, you know, be responsible for lots of money, you know, because they have the, the that that kind of role to to distribute generosity, you know, generosity. The fifth line is that great generous one. And then the sixth line is the one that's kind of beyond money. You know, it wants to get beyond money. It wants to get to the end of like, let's just do away with this stuff altogether. So it's thinking the long-term view. It's thinking, well, we will eventually get beyond it. And we're, in a way, it goes back to the first line. Like we'll get back to simplicity where actually everything in nature feeds everything else. If we just get out the way, everything works perfectly. <laughs> so it kind of comes back to that 44th gene key of interference. Mm -hmm. If we stop interfering then life, synarchy, you know, or everything begins to mesh and fit well. But you have to have a whole, you know, one day the whole of humanity will play that out. But it's in the, in the beginning of the awakening, it's going to happen in, in small groups, clusters, you know. And first of all, in, in singles, then in relationships, then in small family groups, and then, in, you know, and the same in business. You can grow prosperity you have to grow it like piece by piece. So you start with you. And, and if you come from that place of non-lack at the beginning, then everything you do, every step you take will engender this synchronicity to spin around you. But don't take my word for it. Um, come and do the pearl and uh, you'll see for yourself. <laughs> I am excited for this retreat. I mean, if you're listening and you don't want to figure out what your gene keys are in the Pearl sequence, I cannot resonate with that. <laughs> it's such a wonderful map to have so you can orient yourself to the path of least resistance. But one of the questions that's just burning inside me that I have to ask you is with, with all of this, what are your thoughts on fate and destiny then? That's a big question at the end. <laughs> <laughs> to close it out, there you go. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, I'll try and answer it as simply as possible. Well, in the Gene Keys, you have shadow, gift, city, right? So you have, you know, the, the first, the beginning is the shadow is a state where you don't feel like you're in control. So you feel like you, um, you know, you're, life is controlled by the fates, you know, and that you've been unlucky or misfortune or that kind of thing. And so, you know, you're, so you tend to get weighed down with that. All right. Um, the gift, which is the next layer is when you break out of that mindset and you open up and you go, I am in control. I do have free will. I can create change. I can take the initiative, everything I've been talking about. I can make fire. You know, I can change anything in my life you know, from this state. And in a year from now, it can be completely different. I'm not lacking, you know, and out of that comes like the, the, this, this knowing of like, 
you know, I'm in charge, you know, I get to do what I want. So I can use my, my will and my power and my love and, and there's free will. Um, and when you get to this, the highest level, the transcendent level, the city, right, which is the, this, this essential one with everything divinity state, which very few hum, human beings know anything about yet. Um, but maybe we've had the odd glimpse. When you get to that level, um, and I can speak from having glimpsed, um, you come into a state where you realize again, both of those two are true. There's that, you know, that, that there is no free will because it's all orchestrated, but there's also free will. <laughs> um, and this, you know, because it appears that we are taking choices, but from the highest level, the whole is making the choice through us, but we're no longer separate. So when you no longer realize, when you realize you're no longer separate from the whole, you realize you're not making the choice. The whole is making the choice through you. This is why in Zen and, and other teachings, they call it choiceless awareness, you know, and the, the ancient Indian teachings also, the Advaita teachings will talk about this, like this choiceless awareness. You just, life just unravels in spite of us, right? And even when we make mistakes, that was part of the unraveling. And yet within that, framework we also have the kind of the 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 myth of free will that we you know we are on a journey and we have to make the journey happen so you can't just sort of go oh well it's all i don't have to do anything it's all i can just forget it i can just sit back and do nothing and then everything will happen because it doesn't work like that that's the final end realization <laughs> that comes to you that's your that's your final realization it has to come to you you can't kind of start with it. You actually have to kind of, you know, as a concept, you know, you have you have to actually earn that, earn that revelation where, and that revelation is, I don't have to make any effort. I don't have to make any effort. But along the way, you have to make some effort <laughs> to get, because you have to make the effort, first of all, to get out of the shadow, to get out of the, the rut that you're in. You have to make that initiative and you have to push yourself out like the flower pushes itself through the earth or the chick forces itself out of the egg that is in nature we have to push through barriers and stretch ourselves and then when we taste that clean air and we grow our wings then up above we can look down and then we have that revelation of wow i'm up here now i don't really have to do very much at all because i realize everything's interconnected and i have the view finally from above and now i understand everything and isn't that wonderful <laughs> So even if you hear someone saying that to you, it may not be useful to you right now because right now you might be in the state where look, like, nope, I got to focus. I got to be determined. I got to pull myself out of this before I get to that. You know, that's great that you've got it, but you know, I can't take that on. It's not my reality right now. You know, so we have to be, so it's a life is a journey of flowerings, you know, and, and, seeings and revelations and it's the wisdom is all inside us the journey is already embedded inside us it's connected to the fabric of everyone we know and people we have we don't know yet i mean when you begin to open up your prosperity you'll be amazed at the people the new people that step into your life you know with all kinds of openings gifts qualities i mean there's going to be some hucksters in there as well they're going to be a few tricksters there's going to be some testy ones for you to kind of go well you know i gotta learn from this one you know he's sneaky you know or <laughs> or whatever it is so you know built into i'm not describing like a perfect world i'm describing like a perfectly synchronized theatrical story that end that kind of prosperity is actually not at the end prosperity is in the actual journey itself mm -hmm. it's also at the end but it's it's actually in the journey itself so mm -hmm. perhaps that's what we really need to learn thank you for ending with that i think there may be some people wondering how a how the mathematics and the astrology can possibly be true and you said it so poetically, the magic of mathematics and magic happening all at the same time, having the free will and also not um, everything is is happening for you right now in a way that's perfect. 
and you have the choice to answer your call every day, every hour. You can have the choice to lay down in bed and not do anything. Um, but if you are feeling the call to explore this more, you can check out this Pearl Sequence uh, deep dive retreat. Is that what the official name of it? Yeah, it's a deep dive um, retreat. Okay. And, you know, may, I, I don't know, people, if if you've never been on one of these online retreats, they're, they're, they are kind of the new way uh, of awakening, really, of like mass awakening. Because, um, you know, you carry on in your normal life, you know, and this retreat goes on in the background. It's four months, this one. So it go, you know, so it goes on slowly and subtly in the background. And every week there's themes and there's different things. There's, you know, you're you're not overloaded with stuff. You know, you'll be you'll be working through an online course that's laid out really beautifully with, you know, it's really, really elegant and simple with little videos. And you just watch this video, it's 10 minutes, and then you can read this little bit of text, or you can get the hard copy of the book as well if you want to read it offline. Um, and then there are little audios of your gene keys. So your pearl sequence is embedded in your course. So your course is personalized to you. So it will show you your gene keys, your audios specific to you. You know, so you, you don't have to listen to all 64, only the ones that relate to you, but they're embedded in your course. Uh, so it's kind of clever. It's intelligent in that way. Um, and also we have, it's you know, we've got these online retreats down like over the last... I don't know, a couple of years, we've taken around over 10,000 people through online retreats all around the world. And we kind of, they're, they're beautifully layered. So we've really learned like newcomers coming in, you're not overwhelmed. And mm -hmm. if your life takes a kind of sharp turn and suddenly you need to pay more attention to something else, it also works fine. You can kind of, you can, you can dial it up or you can dial it down. You can adapt your life to the teachings the other, rather than the other way around. Every month, there's a re there's a core meditation journey, beautiful meditation journey with music. That's that kind of gives your right brain and a set of metaphors to kind of contemplate as you're kind of working through your pearl sequence, as you're as you're deepening to understand it. Every month, there's a week called Community Call Week where we invite everyone, usually thousands, to come together in different time zones, whichever your time zone is into curated groups where you can come and talk to other people doing their pearl sequence in another culture somewhere else in the world. And you're, you'll be in a breakout room with like three or four people and you can share with them. And it's incre that is like an incredible way of learning. Unbelievable. So I'm always like encouraging people on the courses, for goodness sake, if you don't do anything else, come to one of those calls and you'll see what I mean. Um, and you get to make friends and connect. You know, and that's what the pearl's all about: connecting, collaborating, synchronicity, opening up the your field, stretching yourself beyond your where you are now. Um, and sometimes, you know, that's really helpful hearing other people's stories, and often people in much harder situations than you yourself are. Mm -hmm. um, and and then we do what else do we do we have uh, we have a live q a each um we, we have forums we have all kinds of ways of connecting staying connected but you can connect whatever at whatever way you want um essentially you're following this online course um but because there's a collective doing it and we're all focused on prosperity it creates an incredible energy anyone who's participating you're kind of part of this field who's collective contemplation is on prosperity and you're doing it for four months whatever else is going on in your life so by the end of those four months even if you haven't done that much in the course you've been held by this field and so you're going to see things in your life probably make some shifts you, it's, you know you might see some synchronicities come to you around prosperity around different aspects of your life um and, you know, so there's a magic to it as well as it's, you know, once you've bought the, bought the retreat, you have the course forever anyway. So you can just like go back to it, go deeper, you know, follow it down layer after layer. And we, you know, I, we now provide lots of layers to it. So you can kind of, so advanced students coming in as well can go into deeper veins, you know, of it. But you go at whatever level you're comfortable. Um, and it's like, 
it, it's simple in its essence. So they're really powerful. They're really, really powerful. Thank you so much for explaining all of this around prosperity and uh, the retreat, which I'm thrilled to be a part of. And congratulations on on the Gene Keys, on on growing that organization in a way that's so sustainable and still feels so patient and general, uh, generous and and personable. Every time I talk to someone from your organization, it feels like you're just this tiny, tiny company that's just starting out. But just to see this, the actual global reach that the GQs have had, it's really amazing. There's so many things that other businesses can learn from, from you folks. And I'm sure yeah, that's going to happen you. in ripple effects throughout this retreat. Well, we put the teachings at the core of our own business model, you know, so that's why we we are here to serve, you know, and in these online retreats, we're here to serve you as am I, you know, and so we're at, at your disposal. So we're hopefully modeling it. Thank you so much for coming on the show, Richard. I'm so excited to see you in the UK in a couple of weeks, and I hope to connect yeah. again here soon. Yeah, it's been wonderful, Jessica. Lovely to kind of meet you properly and um, and love to everyone listening to this.